Hello, my name is Glenn Hall, and today is December 11th, 2023. This video is called The Great City. The Great City. What is the great city of Scripture? What is the great city of the Bible? I'm really provoked in my spirit about a couple of um, hot topics that... Uh, are in vogue today and, and that we should be talking about today. The first is um, Babylon the Great. The second is the genocide occurring over in Israel, the Middle East, uh, the Palestinian territory. Um, there's a lot of where there are many Christians who are talking about these things. Unfortunately, there's one Christian in particular who is a new Christian. He is really just a babe in Christ. He has done a lot of research, but he is teaching um, about things that he really doesn't know much about <clears throat> because he doesn't understand the spiritual implication of things. He sees, he sees some things in the natural, um, but um, he does not yet have the experience or the knowledge or the understanding, the spiritual understanding, to really know what's going on. Um, I'm talking about Dustin Nemos because he put out something that I saw today for the first time, and the, the headline of it is, Love All People um, Except the Jews, Hate the Jews. Now that is a very provocative title, <clears throat> but um, I've heard him talk enough to know that he doubts whether or not the Jews can be saved. And the reason why he believes that is because he believes that the Jews are um, the seed of the Nephilim at this point. And I'm not going to get into all of the reasons why he thinks that. You can listen to him and uh, see what he says about that. But because of that, he doesn't know if they can be saved, you know, because they're not fully human, if they are, in fact, seed of the Nephilim, <clears throat> if they have demonic seed or satanic seed in them. The, the thing to understand about salvation is that it applies to all of God's creation. It's not just necessarily human beings that God talks about. And I think the place I want to go here is um, Philippians. It's either Philippians or Colossians. Let me look. I think I'm going to look in my Bible instead of looking online here. Philippians 2 verse 10 says this, 9 and 10. Therefore God has highly exalted Jesus, the Christ, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, the day is coming when every knee will bow, every knee in heaven, every knee on earth, every knee under the earth. Where do these demonic entities live now? Well, we hear that they live under the earth. We hear stories that they have been in deep underground military bases. We've heard stories of actual fights with these entities that live under the earth. 
the day is coming when all will believe in Jesus, all will bow their knees to Jesus. They all will proclaim that Jesus is Lord. He is the Lord and creator of all. You have to realize this. Um, you know, th there's a lot of hard theology that you never hear, but let me tell you one of those uh, pieces of hard theology. Who created evil? God. Who allowed Satan into the Garden of Eden right after he had created Adam and Eve? God. What did Satan do there? He tempted Eve. And Eve was deceived. Eve sinned. And Adam, I believe in order for Eve not to be lost, followed her in her sin. The scripture says that Adam was not deceived. In other words, he willfully ate of the fruit and followed Eve into judgment. He was a type of Christ. The hard things that the church never talks about is the origin of sin. Why was Satan there in the garden? What was the purpose? Was it a surprise to God that Adam and Eve ate of that tree and that they fell into sin and that they therefore were cast out of the garden? Of course, it was no surprise. It was God's plan. Well, I'm not going to get into the plan right now. I've done that before in other places, but I am going to get into the great city. And part of the understanding of the great city has to do with the Jews' role in that great city. Sometime in this video, I'm going to play a short clip about two minutes long of a rabbi, um, evidently a faithful rabbi according to the scriptural faith, who accurately tells you, tells us about the rulers behind the scenes. What I want to do now is go to Luke chapter 11. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. This is an area, this is one of the areas, one of the chapters where you have him pronouncing woe upon the Pharisees. So in 11 chapter 45, one of the lawyers answered Jesus and said, Teacher, in saying these things you're saying, you insult us also. And Jesus said to them, Woe to you lawyers also, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your fathers killed, so you are witnesses, and you consent to the deeds of your fathers. For they killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. Now, there's a very interesting phrase here. In verse 50, he says, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah. Were the Jews there when Cain killed Abel? Were the Jews in the loins of Cain, even 
when Cain killed Abel? No, because the Jews come through Noah. Now it is possible that one of the wives of Noah's sons had come through the seed of Cain or the line of Cain. It is possible. But even if that's the case, let me take you to another scripture. This is Revelation 18. And this is after really three chapters dealing with Babylon the Great and the fall of Babylon. The very last verse in chapter 18 says that in Babylon, in her, was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who have been slain on the earth. Well, was Abel slain on the earth? Of course. So in Babylon the Great was found the blood of all the prophets, all the saints, all the Kodeshim. And not only prophets, not only Kodeshim, not only the righteous ones and the prophets, but all who have been slain on the earth, all. Babylon the Great. Well, this tells me one thing, and that is that the Jews, the ones specifically that Jesus was talking to 2,000 years ago, were in Babylon the Great. So is Babylon the Great limited to Jews? Love all people but hate the Jews because only the Jews are evil? No, that's not what God is saying. Can you think of any other group of people that have massacred prophets and the righteous ones? What about the Catholic Church? What about the Inquisition? What about killing T Tyndall, who translated the Latin Bible into English? What about the English Revolution when Cromwell took power, a Protestant, and then they massacred Catholics? See, Revelation 18, verse 24, says that in Babylon the Great was found the blood of all the prophets and of the saints and of all who have ever been slain on the earth. So we need to understand what Babylon the Great is. If we go to the book of Genesis, chapter 10, we have, this is the table of the nations uh, from the people who came from Noah and his sons. Noah's sons were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. In verse 6 it says, The sons of Ham were Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. In verse 8 it says, Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man. He was a mighty hunter before I am. Therefore it is said, like, a, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before I am. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Okay, that is in the ancient land of Babylon, the land that's now known as Iraq. From that land he went into Assyria, which is right next door, and built Nineveh, 
Rehoboth Ur, Kala, and Rezin between Nineveh and Kala. That is the great city. This is the first time in scripture we have a mention of the great city, and it's specifically mentioning the cities that Nimrod founded and it included Babel or Babylon. It included Babylon. So the great city from the very beginning is identified as the land of Babylon. Where else do we have mentions of the great city? Well, the place that we really see it um, is in the book of Revelation. So let's go to Revelation chapter 10, chapter 11. In chapter 11, we have the two witnesses. Okay, the two witnesses, uh, they testify. And verse 7 of chapter 11 of Revelation says, When they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city. That symbolically, or spiritually, the word is spiritually, is called Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord was crucified. Was Jesus crucified in Sodom? No, Sodom had long been destroyed. Was Jesus crucified in Egypt? No. But it says that their bodies lie in the street of the great city where the Lord was crucified. So do all of the two witnesses, do the two witnesses, are their dead bodies one day going to be seen in old Jerusalem, the city where Jesus was crucified? That's what a lot of people teach. Where else do we have um, a mention of the great city? Well, in Revelation chapter 18, in Revelation 18, we have the great city mentioned, I think it's four times. And I want to read you those verses five times. Verses 10, 16, 18, 19, and 21. So let's look at this in Revelation 18. Verse 10, starting with verse 9. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her, that is Babylon the Great, will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city, Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. Then verse 16, 15, starting in 15, The merchants of wares who gained wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping, Mourning aloud, alas, alas, for the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels and pearls, for in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors and all whose trade is on the sea, stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning, what city was like the great city? That's verse 18. And then verse 19. They threw dust on their heads, and they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city, where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour she has been laid waste. And then verse 21. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, 
so will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. So the great city is Babylon the great. But look at this. Many people believe that the great city is the Catholic Church. This book by uh, Alexander Hislop called The Two Babylons or On the Papal Worship proved to be the worship of Nimrod and his wife. The worship of Nimrod and his wife. So Nimrod, he shows, was the founder of the false religions, the idolatrous religions, the the source of the false gods that people idolized and have idolized since Nimrod was alive. And Hislop shows that the Catholic Church incorporated all of those abominations into its religion. It's filled with idolatry everywhere. And there have been a lot of good videos lately showing the idolatry and the perversion within the Catholic Church. But is it limited to the Jews and now the Catholic Church? No. Let's look at Revelation 17. Revelation 17 is where Babylon the Great is really introduced. Verse 1, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. I'm going to stop there. The entire earth is now drunk with sexual immorality. Such gross sexual immorality that even leads to the drinking of the blood of the people and especially the little children that they abuse so that they can produce adrenochrome and get high off of their blood. It's beyond disgusting. It's hard to even talk about, but yet that's the reality that we live in. And that's Babylon the Great. And the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven, horn, seven heads and ten horns. So the woman is sitting on a scarlet beast. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots, mother of prostitutes, and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the Kodeshim, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Well, of course, because Babylon is accused of the blood of all who were ever slain on the earth. But she's a mother of prostitutes. So, we have a lot of little prostitutes, not nearly as big as the Catholic Church, and they're called Protestant churches. And the Protestant churches partake of the same evils that the Catholic Church does, usually not so conspicuously.
Now, I don't intend to go through chapter 17 in great detail, but there was another piece I wanted, a couple more pieces here. Verse 9 says that, well, I'm, I'm going to read verse 6. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I marveled greatly. John was astonished. He was dumbfounded. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. The angel said to him, why do you marvel? Well, why was he marveling? because he saw what the church looked like at the end of this age, what we often call the church age. John was astonished, he marveled. Then the angel begins to explain what Babylon the Great is. In verse 9 he says, this calls for a mind with wisdom, the seven heads. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. Okay. Many people will say that those seven mountains are the seven mountains of Rome. But that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about seven mountains of government. Seven governmental mountains. There are seven beasts, seven heads of the beast. We have one beast. The beast is man. We have seven heads that are identified in Scripture as kingdoms that ruled over all the earth. I want to read now the very end of chapter 17, starting in verse 15. It says, The angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. In other words, it's the whole world. She's seated on the beast. The entire world has become intoxicated with her sorcery and her sexual immorality. What have we just gone through with respect to sorcery? all of the things that they're doing with respect to COVID-19. So much sickness, so much death, all done at the hands of Babylon the Great. And yes, there are many, many Jews who are at the top of that whole pyramid that planned and executed the whole COVID-19 pandemic. 16, and the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. Remember, the woman rides the beast. She has always controlled the beast. The rider of a horse controls the horse. So she's controlled this beast. She's the one with whom the kings of the earth committed sexual immorality. And she's the one with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth became drunk. The ten horns that you saw, representing kings that are with the head of the beast, this is the eighth head that it's talking about, these ten kings and the eighth head of the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose of being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. We are now seeing the fall of Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is being attacked and destroyed on all fronts by the beast and the kings aligned with him. And then verse 18. And the woman that you saw, that's the harlot, Babylon the Great, 
the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Well, there will be people who will say that Jerusalem, old Jerusalem, controls everything going on in the world. Is that what this is talking about? Certainly, old Jerusalem is one of the cities that is part of the great city, but is it the only one? Let's look at, well, you remember Genesis chapter 10 with Nimrod. His cities were called the great city. Jonah chapter 1 verse 2 says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. In verses, or in uh, the rest of this uh, book of Jonah, he calls Nineveh the great city a total of four times. And in the last verse of Jonah, it says, And should not I pity Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? So we see that Nineveh was called a great city. We go to Nahum chapter 3, verse 1. The whole book of Nahum is concerning judgment upon Nineveh. Chapter 3, verse 1 says, Woe to the bloody city, all full of lies and plunder, no end to the prey. So we have Nineveh, a bloody city called the Great City. Let's go to now another prophetic word from Jesus. This is chapter 13 of Luke, starting in verse 31. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I finish my course. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. <coughs> oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus said, How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. They would not repent. They could not repent. And we have a verse we need to look at now in Jeremiah 51. It's verse 9. The prophet says, We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed. Forsake her and let us go, each to his own country, for her judgment has reached up to heaven and has been lifted up even to the skies. We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed.
we would have healed Babylon. Today I read an article by a um, Christian um, who has written many good articles on the Bible and has deep insights into the scripture and he recently did a blog of saying that the United States is Babylon the Great. The United States is part of Babylon the Great, just like every nation on the earth, like every city on the earth. They're all part of the great city. Pay attention. We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed, or she would not be healed. We have a lot of people now who are getting very active again with politics in the United States, hoping to reinstate President Trump, thinking that they're going to heal Babylon. First, Babylon cannot be healed. Second, Trump is one of the active participants in bringing Babylon down. How can you explain his continued support for the vaccine, his, his rushing madly to get the vaccine before the people, and the vaccine being utter poison? What about the Abraham Accord coin? and the whole Abraham Accord Agreement, which was done in the year 2020. You need to look that up on uh, the Internet and find a picture of the Abraham Accord coin. President Trump signed it. And one side of that coin shows you their agenda. It's an evil agenda, which is the transhumanist agenda, it's the agenda of destroying, utterly destroying Babylon the Great and in its place creating a matrix of whoever survives being plugged into direct contact with Satan. So don't get involved with po politics. Don't get involved with any effort to try to fix Babylon because she cannot be fixed. She will not be fixed. She will be destroyed, just as the scripture says that she will be destroyed. So the great city, you have to understand that the great city and Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the great city. Babylon the Great came into existence at the very beginning when Cain killed Abel because Abel's blood is attributed to Babylon the Great. So the great city has ruled the earth. See, when you have any nation, the leaders are always beholden to, the political leaders are always beholden to the religious leaders. They cannot govern unless they get the support of the religious leaders because the religious leaders have the support of the people. Why do you think Trump tries so hard to get the Christians to be on his side, but yet he's not a Christian? Everything he does and says all of his acts show that he's not a Christian. He doesn't even know what it means to repent. He, he has said publicly he doesn't have anything to repent of. Well, that tells you for sure he's not a Christian. So why does he want the Christians to be on board? And they're his biggest supporter. Why? Christians are gullible. Christians can't discern. Christians are still themselves in Babylon the Great.
every government in the world has a secret government behind it that run the show. If you think that the president, the prime minister, you think they're doing it, they're puppets. A hundred percent puppets. They control armies, nations, governments, all the money in the world, all the richest families in the world, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. And I can tell you already one thing, that anyone that somehow made money within a very short span of time has to be part of it. And you think that Mike Zuckerberg owns Facebook? He's a puppet. Facebook was created for their manipulation. Same thing with YouTube, same thing with WhatsApp and Instagram and Netflix and everything. How did Netflix become so big within two years? Only with the power of the ultimate un Endless money of the world, and it's much more than that. World War I was designed by them. World War II, designed by them. World Reserve, which people think be be belongs to the American government. Doesn't belong to the government even. It's a private organization. NASA, CIA, the assassination of JFK, who was the first one who ever talked about it, got a bullet in his head. And needless to say, the attack on the Twin Towers, it wasn't Bin Laden. It was all one big agenda because they needed to go to Afghanistan. You know why? To put pipes in the sea. It's all one big show. We're being fooled and, and millions of Americans are cheering. We're going to a, a, a war against terror. No, you've been fooled. And you think it's different in Israel? You know that Israel was built by the Freemasons, by the way, by the Zionists. There's nothing here kosher. Who approved? Who approved the Declaration of Israel? The United Nations, of course. An organization of peace and unity, and we love all. It's a terror organization built by the New World Order. And they approved the Declaration of Eretz Israel. All the founders of the country of Israel are Freemasons. So this Jewish man he knows what Zionism is. He knows how modern day Israel was created and who created it. Are we going to hate him because we're anti Zionist? Don't lump every Jew into the category of being a Zionist. Not every Jew wants genocide. But you know, when you begin to hate others, like the Zionists, in the same way that the Zionists hate the Palestinians, haven't you become like them? Right now, the majority of the world is part of Babylon the Great. Very few people understand that Babylon the Great is a spiritual entity that has ruled the kings of the earth from the beginning and has utterly corrupted the earth I need to show you a verse, a couple of verses. This is um, Jeremiah 50. See, Jeremiah 50 and 51, all, both chapters deal with the destruction of Babylon the Great. Most people think that it was fulfilled when Babylon fell. 70 years after they captured Jerusalem, but it was not fulfilled then. I'm going to read the first few verses of this chapter. The word that I am spoke concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldeans, 
by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare among the nations and proclaim. Set up a banner and proclaim. Conceal it not and say, Babylon is taken. Bel is put to shame. Merodach is dismayed. This is their names of their gods. Their gods are shamed. They're dismayed. Her images are put to shame. Her idols are dismayed. For out of the north a nation has come up against her, which shall make her land a desolation. And none shall dwell in it, both man and beast shall flee away. That's the introduction to the destruction of Babylon in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50. But look at verse 4. In those days and in that time declares I am. The people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together weeping as they come, and they shall seek, I am their God. They shall ask the way to Zion, with faces turned toward it, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to I am, and an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. This is an indictment against the leaders of ancient Israel, ancient Judah, the Catholic Church, all the Protestant churches. And here, when it says in verse 4, the people of Israel, Israel had long ago been dispersed throughout the world. And the people of Judah shall come together, weeping as they come. There is going to be a massive repentance of God's people. Those who are called Christians, that's Israel. Israel prophetically became the church. The book of Hosea, uh, Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11 tell, tell us that. So Israel no longer refers to the ancient people of Israel only. It refers prophetically to all who have come to believe in Jesus, all who have named themselves as Christians. And the people of Judah, those are all those who name themselves as Jews. And yes, it includes the Edomites who came into Judah forcibly in 126 B.C., But there's going to come a great repentance where these people are finally, finally going to repent. They're going to come together. There'll be the joining of the stick, stick of Judah and the stick of Israel. They'll be one. They'll be one in faith because they will seek God together themselves. Verse 7. All who found them have devoured them, and their enemies have said, We're not guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord, their habitation of righteousness, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. That's what Babylon says. They're not guilty. Babylon's not guilty for the sins they commit against us because we have sinned. You know, God punishes sin. He still punishes sin. By grace you are saved, but... Sin still exists, so you need to repent if you are sinning. And then verse 8. Flee from the midst of Babylon and go out of the land of the Chaldeans. Flee from the midst of Babylon. In Revelation chapter 18... The angel says, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and her plagues. One other verse I want to get to is, um, I think it's in 51. Isaiah 51, verse 49, says this, 
Babylon must fall for the slain of Israel, just as for Babylon have fallen the slain of all the earth. Israel is a Bible code word that means God rules. And it refers to the Kodeshim, it refers to the Holy Ones, it refers to the ones who have had a, an encounter with the Lord, who have struggled with the Lord, and have finally submitted to His perfect will. And Israel had been sent out of their nation well over a hundred years before Jeremiah wrote this and then even if this had been fulfilled by Babylon 70 years later it would have been about 200 years prior to this that Israel had been sent out of the land and yet here it's saying Babylon must fall for the slain of Israel that's prophetic. It's speaking about Babylon being responsible for the blood of all who have fallen, who have been murdered in the earth. So don't despise the Jew and don't despise any other group of people. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Most people still are in utter rebellion to God because they do not come out of their sinful, idolatrous life. They do not come out of Babylon. The reason they won't come out is because they want to partake of her sins. I hope someone will get this to Dustin Nemos. Dustin seriously needs to hear this because he needs, he's becoming very popular and people are listening to him. But if you listen to what he's saying, you could get caught up in this firestorm that is enveloping the Middle East right now and become part of the hate culture. And that is nothing that we want to be involved with. The great city is not ancient Jerusalem alone. It includes ancient Jerusalem. It also includes London, New York, Paris, any city, in fact. I live in a very small rural area where the largest city around is 5,000 people. And uh, one of my uh, nephews recently moved to the area and made a comment that this is Babylon down here. Well, yeah, it is because the people who make the decisions, the people, the politicians who rule the cities, who rule the counties, who rule the states, are all part of Babylon. They have not come out of Babylon. They still submit to crazy laws like requiring the COVID-19 vaccine. There are two cities. There's the city of man, which is what the Bible calls the great city. And there's the city of God, which is also called Jerusalem and Zion. But it's new Jerusalem. It's new Zion. Paul in the book of Galatians very clearly tells you that 
Old Jerusalem corresponds to Hagar, who was cast out. Babylon is going to be utterly and completely destroyed. Does that mean that the, all the infrastructure that we have is going to be destroyed? I don't think so, because then I don't think any human could be saved in the world. I think something is going to happen. And I'll tell you what I think it's going to be. The overcomers are going to be glorified. They will be glorified and they will have power then to implement the kingdom of God. Anything we do to try to implement the kingdom of God now is vanity and powerless. We do not walk in power. We do not have the authority to go into heaven and make decrees that change the earth to bring in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will come when Jesus says it's time. When he glorifies his Kodeshim and empowers them to rule the earth, then the great city will be seen by the inhabitants of the earth in those Kodeshim, those glorified Kodeshim. And they will want to know the way. How do we get there? Babylon the Great will no longer have power over you, no longer tax you to death, no longer try to kill you by implementing crazy policies like the COVID-19 policies. There's two cities. The great city of man and the city of God. So we have a choice. Who will we serve? Which city do we belong to? Are we truly sojourners in the earth looking for the city to come? Or are we satisfied to dwell within man's city? the great city, Babylon the Great, that has defiled the earth with blood, sorcery, and sexual immorality. Choose you this day whom you will serve and don't get caught up in false doctrine and lies that are going forth throughout the earth today. I pray the Lord will open your eyes. Read these scriptures again. Go through the scriptures again. <clears throat> I'll just quickly, if you want to write them down, I'll just <clears throat> go through my list here. I just, I don't write these out, but I have the scriptures in front of me. So Luke 11 45 to 52, Luke 13, 31 to 35, Jeremiah 51, 9, Isaiah 1 and 2. I didn't read that today, but you should read that because it's very profound and deals <clears throat> with this. Verse 10, Isaiah 1, verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Verse 21. How the faithful city has become a harlot, she who was full of justice, righteousness lodged in her, but now murderers. Oh, God. Verse 26, I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. 
Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed by justice, and those enter who repent by righteousness. Now see, people will read this and think, oh, this is coming back to Jerusalem. No, it isn't. Not in a not in a way that we need to look for the establishment of New Jerusalem at ancient Jerusalem. It may be that Jerusalem escapes its total annihilation, but I think uh, it makes sense that Jerusalem will be utterly destroyed so that it cannot be rebuilt. And this is what this is what is coming then. Isaiah chapter 2, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of I am shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills. A mountain is a government. The time is coming when the kingdom of God will be established as the highest of the mountains and all the nations shall flow to it and many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of I Am, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion, new Zion, shall go forth the law and the word of I Am from Jerusalem, from new Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The latter days, this is where we are. Revelation 11 and the two witnesses. You see the definition of the great city. Revelation 17, Revelation 18, dealing with Babylon the Great. Jeremiah 50 and 51, dealing with Babylon the Great. Matthew 23, where Jesus once again pronounces judgment on the scribes and Pharisees and also says they're responsible for the blood of every prophet. Genesis 4 that talks about Cain killing Abel. Genesis 10 that talks about Nimrod establishing the great city in Shinar, in the land of Iraq, in Babylon. Jonah, the great city Nineveh. Nahum, the great city Nineveh. Father, I pray that you will open the eyes and ears of those who truly want to know your will, your ways, and to follow you in truth and in righteousness. Amen.